Hey. 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 Hey, you guys. I hope you guys can hear me. Hope you guys are doing good here. Let me make sure I'm live, honey. Make sure I mute this screen here. Hey, what's up, you guys? So let me, oh, God, I feel like it's been a while. First of all, let me, hey, you guys. <laughs> First of all, let me say thank you to everybody who came through to the Game of Thrones party yesterday. I know YouTube was on some BS with the notifications. A lot of people didn't get notified, didn't get notified or they got notified, like, you know, last minute. So I don't know what was up with that. But to everybody who came through, thank you guys. It felt so good to just talk about just something that I just wanted to talk about for a while and to get other opinions and thoughts. And it was just really, really nice. And it honestly made me miss live streaming. Um, Cause if you guys don't know, I, I had to take a mental break. I had to like straight up take a hiatus from, you know, live streaming. I was still making some content, but y'all know usually I live stream at least, you know, once a week, but I took a break because I was having straight up burnout and um, I was going through a lot of stuff. Y'all like the look? Thank you. I want to keep the two braids. You know, I had my little crown. I guess it feels good to be in modern clothing. <laughs> you know, my little, my little princess dress is cute, but it definitely feels good to be in some modern clothing. But um, yeah, I was having like serious creator burnout and just going through a lot. And I just needed a break. And I just want to thank the people who just allowed me to vent and cry and just get stuff off my chest. Because y'all don't understand, YouTube is one of the most frustrating platforms out there. You know, and it's very hard. You know, people think it's easy. Like they think anybody can come up here and run their mouth and entertain and remember stuff and have people ask you questions on the fly. And you have to be able to answer that. It's a lot of work. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody could just get up here and live stream by themselves for an hour, for two hours, you know, and vice versa. And, um, you know, I just, for me, I was getting so frustrated. And as a commentator, I'm seeing a lot of commentators getting burnt out. The problem is, it seems like people want you to talk about things and lend your platform, because this is what this is. This is my platform that I built, okay, with the help of my subscribers and people who genuinely support me. And it's like people want you to use your platform and put your neck out there and risk your bag and risk your mental health. And then as soon as you say something that they don't like, they flip on you so quick. And I was just like really upset because even though I know that a majority of the people had my back and understood where I was coming from with the whole, you know, nonsense that went on during Black History Month with the glue situation and all that stuff, you know, and for me, I'm a very in-depth person. When I do a breakdown, when I do a video, when I research something, I don't know how to half-ass it. I know it's a lot easier for people to just, you know, put out a five minute video, give an opinion, like, comment, and subscribe. That's not me when I do an in-depth breakdown. And so, you know, it was just kind of frustrating because it's like people ask for my opinion. And as soon as I give my opinion and it's not what you want to hear, then I'm everything but a child of God. I'm threatened. I mean, the, the, the threats I was getting was so disgusting and just so damn ridiculous. You know, and I know a lot of that is just people who just want to run their mouth. But when they see in real life, it's all teeth, you know, but it's just it's really frustrating because we put ourselves out there. A lot of y'all cannot do what we do. Let's, let's keep that real. A lot of y'all don't have the balls to, to stand in your shit, to say your truth and say whatever comes with it. It is what it is. And we do that. And there's been so many times where I put in my brand my my everything on the line just to to speak the truth just to speak out against certain things and it seems like it's okay when i speak out against things that benefit people but the second i hold these same people to task it's an issue 
For instance, if I'm talking about black male celebrities and some of the, the, you know, the fuckery that they do towards black women, oh, people are all here for that. Claps, bravo. If I talk about white people and the things that they do, oh, folks are here for that. They love to see white folks and, and Karens and, and, and Kens get drugged. If I talk about, you know, a, a gay male like James Charles and his predatory behavior, folks are here for that. But then it's like there's a segment of the population you're just not allowed to question or, or, or talk about. And I don't like that. I don't like that because I feel like I have put so much of myself out there and I've spoken about things that affect all black people, Africans, African-Americans, Caribbeans, all of that. But as soon as I say something that folks don't want to hear, I'm all types of Nigerian bitches. I'm not shit. But it's like, am I a Nigerian bitch when I talk about colorism and the things that affect the black community? And I talk about, you know, death and, and just all this stuff that I've that I put my neck out there for over the years on YouTube. You know, that's the part that's frustrating. When I hold Nigerians accountable for things that they do, y'all are here for that. When you had Nigerian artists coming at Beyonce mad because they felt like it was Beyonce's job to come out and speak against stars. And I said, no, it's not. Beyonce's African-American and let's stop acting like she came to Africa and pillaged all these artists and took so much from them as if nobody was paid, as if nobody was credited. Like, we're not going to do that. I feel like I've been very, very fair across the board and I hold everybody accountable black, white, Asian, gay, straight, whatever. My delivery may not always be the best, but I, I, I honestly, guys, I don't know how to, how do I say it? I don't know how to be soft and dumb myself down. That's just not my personality. And I'm sorry if it comes off as aggressive or mean, but that's never my intention. I just get tired of like, that's always being thrown. Like you're mean, you're mean. And I'm like, how am I mean for just telling the truth? Like, it's so frustrating. And sometimes I feel like, do I have to come here and, you know, just not be myself and just, you know, talk like this and hey, you guys, and talk in this weird high pitched voice. That's just not me. That's not my mannerisms. I don't know how to be anybody but T. And I just get tired of like, it seems like anytime I have an opinion of something, it's okay to disagree. People disagree all the time, but people take it to the next level when it comes to me and my opinions. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I gotta be everything but a child of God. I have to be threatened. You know what I'm saying? My kids gotta get brought up. Like all types of just fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, it's frustrating. So I was just, I was going through a lot. So for me, when I seen like the energy was shifting as if I like, did something different that I, you know what I mean? Anytime I've talked about certain situations that didn't feel right with me, I call it out. But it, it's to the point now where a lot of y'all are shaming commentators for every little thing and are trying to cancel people for everything that they say if they don't agree with you. As soon as it's something that y'all don't like, y'all want to start this whole cancel train and this person needs to be canceled. And in a minute, a lot of people are just going to say, F it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to talk about certain things, you know, because it's like when I give my opinion on certain things, if it doesn't agree with somebody, then I need to shut the hell up and I'm everything but a child of God. But then when y'all want to use my platform to speak on things that are affecting the community, now it's all good. And I'm just the type of person, I don't like feeling used. I don't think anybody likes feeling used, especially when, you know, I talk about certain things and then we don't get the benefit of like, you know, getting compensated for everything we do on YouTube. Like literally every other video I put out is demonetized. Even my live streams, they started to demonetize. It's okay because I get enough support where it doesn't even matter anymore. I'm not tripping, but we get punished every time we try to speak the truth. Every time we talk about some real stuff, we are punished by YouTube. And so it's bad enough that you have a platform like YouTube punishing creators who wanna talk about real issues that affect the black community, the black diaspora. It's bad enough that we got to deal with that. But then on top of that, the hate that we get as soon as people don't agree with our assessment, 
is ridiculous. I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna just share my screen real quick. You know, y'all gotta bring receipts because people think you're lying about everything. But these are this was the video I did earlier in the week about Mary Crosby and her grandfather and Lori Harvey. There was nothing vulgar about these videos. It was just commentary demonetized. These are my two most recent videos that I just did. Again, talking about James Charles, he's protected. Anytime I do a video on this, on this dude, this grown man, demonetized. James Charles, these are the ones I did yesterday. Both of these videos demonetized, okay? Let me show y'all my live streams, just from the ones that I've done this month. These are my live streams. Every other stream demonetized. You know, everybody throw up and down, I'm eating off this girl, demonetized. This one's monetized, demonetized, demonetized, demonetized. Every other stream. You know, so it's like, it's bad enough we got to fight the system here on YouTube. But then it's like, I'm not about to sit here and fight and go back and forth with strangers either. You know what I mean? So for me, I just needed to like take a break because it was just, it was too much. It was too much and it was not okay. Like the responses I was getting from people based off of my opinion. Because like I said, how are you coming at me and knocking me for my opinion? This is what I get paid to do. This is what I get paid to do. This is what I love to do. I do commentary. It is my opinion. So you can't shame me for my opinion all the while on my platform stating your opinion. Like what, what sense does that make? You're stating your opinion. So why am I supposed to be, you know what I'm saying, be quiet about my opinion? Like it doesn't make any sense. Like this is a place for people to share ideas and opinions regardless if you agree or disagree. I just don't understand when we got to the point where we cannot agree to disagree like adults and keep it moving and that's the part that's just really gotten just very very frustrating and like i said it's not just youtube then i have to deal with being shadow banned on instagram you know because again when you're telling the truth on instagram and trying to wake people up you're shadow banned so now you when you google me i don't even come up the my fan page i don't even know who runs that fan page they come up you know so it's like i feel like i'm being punished you know and I'm like trying to figure out like, what do I wanna do next? Because I love YouTube, I love my channel, I love interacting with my audience, but I, I can't deal with the backlash on the back end from YouTube that you guys don't see. And then on the forefront, just constantly being attacked every time I have an opinion that somebody doesn't agree with. But then in the same breath, when real shit goes down, y'all want me to cover it, you know? So it, it is, it's, it's frustrating and I just needed a break. So I just really, you know, just been doing Zoom. So that's helped to just talk to my subscribers on Zoom and on Discord and just, you know, talk there about just issues and, and just hear different people's stories. So that's, that's helped me a lot. And then just getting support from people, you know, like Mr. Uh, Deontay Towner, you know, he, he kept me in prayer because I, I was going through a lot just mentally, you know, um, my, my mods, you know, thankful to all of them and their kind words. And even like in the real life, like my friends, you know, like my real friends who check on me, like, dang, you haven't done a live stream in a while, what's going on? And it also let me know like people that you think are your friends are not really your friends. When they're going through shit, oh, they're all on your phone, they're calling you, they're using your energy. But then when you're sad and depressed and you're going through it and you're calling them, no answer, no return phone call. So it's like, you know, I just kind of, got a, a, a nice awakening this month, you know? This month exposed a lot of stuff. And and thank you also to Dollface. Like, I just, I love him. You know, that's like one of my friends that I can just talk to who understands YouTube, who just understands the nonsense that we go through and who just always has my back. And he's just somebody I can call, you know, when we're going through good stuff, laughing, clowning, and when I'm going through it. So I, I'm just grateful for his genuine friendship, you know? So it's been a lot, man. Like I just, I just need to take a break, but honestly, the Game of Thrones party really helped. Like it, it just, I, I, I missed you guys. It was fun reading the comments. I haven't done that in weeks. I come on here and I do live streams because I genuinely enjoy it. It's not about the, the, what is that? The super chats. It's not about that. 
because if it was about the super chats, I would live stream every day. I went almost three weeks without a live stream. So it's not about that. Like I genuinely like, oh, doll face, you're here. <laughs> I love you too, boo. <laughs> he knows I was going through it, you know, and he was just telling me like, just hang on there and, you know, just let them folks talk, just keep doing you. So, you know, it just feels good to have like people who are just, who genuinely love me, like for who I am just the perfectly imperfect person that I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of loud. Maybe I'm kind of, you know, ratchet or ghetto or aggressive. I don't know. I hear it all. But I'm just me. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know how to dumb that down. And I'm not going to dumb that down. And right now I'm trying to find other outlets where I can still speak freely and talk about things that are important to me without this constant censorship and the constant nonsense. I have a meeting with the company tomorrow. I'm assuming it should be a pretty decent meeting since they made me sign an NDA, but I'm going to meet with them and just really talk to them about just the stuff I'm going through. Because I think at this point, a lot of folks are ready to just walk away from YouTube because it's, it's too much and it's not worth the headache. It's not worth the trolling. It's not worth the threats. It's not worth the drama. You know what I'm saying? Especially when for the most part, it's not like we're getting paid a whole lot of money. You know what I'm saying? We all make money here, but not to the extent of a lot of these white content creators who get pushed. And people will be like, oh, well, you should be at a million. I should be. No cap. You know what I'm saying? But there's a reason why I'm not. There's a reason why they constantly push foolishness, but anybody talking about real stuff, anybody trying to make people think, they suppress you. You know, you talk about race related uh, topics on here, they suppress your channel. You talk about things to help people's self esteem, they suppress your channel. You talk about, you know, LGBT topics, they suppress your channel. You know, unless you're part of the cookie cutter squad, like James Charles and all these other people, and this is no hate towards them, because at the end of the day, people are going to follow and support what they want to support. And if they have millions of followers, it makes sense why YouTube would keep pushing them. But it frustrates me because when they do get into some mess and people report on them and talk about them your stuff is automatically demonetized they stop pushing the video through the algorithm it's like nobody can talk about these golden people on youtube and it's not fair but then when folks want to drag black content creators oh that's pushed everywhere it's pushed all over youtube any hate video oh it's pushed all through youtube you know so it, it's it's just been frustrating but I'm glad to be back. Um, like I said, I just, I appreciate y'all, the ones who support me. Even if you disagree, you just understand, okay, well, I don't agree with that video. I'll be back. I'll see you on the next one. I respect that rather than people who want to use my energy when it's convenient. And then as soon as they don't, you know, agree with something that I'm everything but a child of God, people like that to me are just straight up demons. You know what I'm saying? And I just rather you not be here. I rather, if you don't like me, if you don't like the, the content that I make, um, if you can't stand me that much, I shouldn't see your black ass in my analytics. That's the part that's funny. Cause on the back end, we can see everybody who comes to your channel. And the difference is I don't watch your channel, but for somehow, for some reason, you're always here watching my content for someone who doesn't like me. So I just, I find that very, very interesting because the people I don't like, I don't watch them. I don't give them my energy. I don't give them my views and I damn sure don't give them my money. So it, it just doesn't make sense to me why people who don't like somebody continuously watch them just to get upset. It makes no sense. So yeah, so that that's my YouTube burnout story, but I'm back. Let me go ahead and read some of these super chats. Sorry if I missed some. I just wanted to like talk because I know a lot of people have been wondering, you know, where I'm at and what was going on. Um, Nana Nia said, nineteen and nine. She said, first of all, come through with the braids. You look so pretty. I've been watching all of your old videos, um, and you are you always came through with the honesty. Love you, T. Thank you so much. Love you too, sis. And thanks for coming through. Um, Miss Scorpio Queen said 1999. She says, Thanks for being you. Thank you, sis. I appreciate you. Um, Luna Galaxy sent 20 says, Yeah, I caught a live on YouTube. YouTube doesn't send me notifications despite having the bell on. YouTube stays tripping. Thank you for the super chat. And they do. And that's another issue. They don't notify people. Literally, most of the people who end up coming to my live were just roaming around YouTube. <laughs> And they're like, oh, shit, Lovely T's live. Let me see what she's talking about. 
because they don't notify people on a regular basis. It's so hit and miss. But on Discord, anytime I go live, post a video, they get a notification like this. On Patreon, they get a notification like this. It's only YouTube. And it doesn't make sense. And it does it to, um, to all the content creators because there's people I'm subscribed to. I have the notifications on. Nothing happens. It just doesn't make sense. They'll unsubscribe people from your channel. And then when you complain and you tell them this, they just play crazy. Like they, oh, well, no, that couldn't possibly be happening. Yes, it is. You mean to tell me that a hundred different people who don't know each other are saying the same thing? So it is, it's, it's very frustrating. Um, Rona Phil sent 10 says, B-U-T, we love you. I do want to know how Deja is doing in all this. With all this additional embarrassment, I hope she's okay. I knew something was off with T.I., Bobby Hill looking self. You know what? I seen that meme and I can't unsee it when they had T.I. compared to Bobby Hill. <laughs> that was crazy. I seen that. Um, Chloe G says, ah, oh, we love you, T. The Game of Thrones live was wonderful. Thank you so much. And I definitely want to do more of that. Not necessarily Game of Thrones, but like, you know, other things. I know people are talking about starting like book clubs where we could like read a book and talk about it or watch a movie and talk about it. Like, I just thought that was just so dope. You know, just everybody coming together. Yes, I understand Game of Thrones came out in 2011. And I just got on the, the whole Game of Thrones bandwagon, but hell, better late than never, right? You know, like now I'm team Game of Thrones and now I'm caught up and I can't wait for the prequels. So I'm super excited for that. Um, Vixen5, he says, hey T, love from Canada as always. You know, you can catch me in the DMs on the Discord, sis. Thank you so much, Vic. I appreciate you. Um, Tateria Woolerton, 499. Thank you so much, Tateria. So yeah, it's it's been a lot. It's been a lot going on, but um, I appreciate y'all. Mandra91 says, love you T, keep being you and speaking the real, waiting patiently for the Discord. All right. And I did, I went through a lot of the emails that were sent already. So a lot of the people who emailed, it took me a month because I told you I'm working in sections. So I went through the Patreon people. I've gone through the email people and then I'll be working on the Instagrammers. So I'm still letting people on, but it's, it's a slow process. Because like I said, the Discord for me is not about money. I don't want a whole bunch of people in there. If it was about money, I would just say it's open. Everybody pay five. Let everybody come. Hell no. You know what I'm saying? We like our peace. We like our energy. And we want critical thinkers. We don't need people in there getting upset and, and you know, just wanting to just, we could disagree, but all that negativity and thinking that you're about to be trolling people and cussing folks out, we don't have that in there. You know, people disagree all the time. Okay, well, I don't agree with you. I'll, I'll see you later. I'm, I'm about to go to the political room. I, I'm done with this back and forth on finance. You know, so people disagree all the time, but it's respectful. And that's what's missing on social media. Um, let's see here. Somebody says, I want to get back in the Discord. Oh, you, you were a white walker and you got booted out? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. Send an email or something. Um, let's see here. Um, M Dinner Party 723 says, I'm definitely here for the book and movie discussions. Maybe one day I'll be able to join the Discord. Thank you so much. Um, Missy MPH says, send in love from Lon from a safe Londoner. Thank you. Not the hammers. Y'all are messy. The Discorders are posting hammers. Y'all are so messy. But um, so I want to talk about. <laughs> I love y'all so much. Um, I want to talk about this whole Am Am Amber Heard situation. And this is one thing I always find funny, too, is that people will be like, oh, you only talk about when black men mess up or when black people mess up. Honey, just because you missed the damn video, that's on you. I'm probably one of the few black creators that has kept my damn size eight foot on Amber Heard's neck. OK, one of my very first podcasts was about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. OK. Because unfortunately, you can't talk about certain things on YouTube. So if y'all have not listened to my Johnny Depp, Amber Heard breakdown, it's on my podcast from a year ago. So we, we've been talking about Amber Heard over here. My thing with this situation is it's crazy. She was trending today. And so it was announced that supposedly she's been fired from Aquaman. Now, y'all know I'm Team Marvel all day, okay? Team Marvel. But 
I think Aquaman is probably one of my favorite DC movies. I, I genuinely love the movie. I know some of y'all were like, y'all weren't really impressed with it. I don't know. I liked it. I, I'm here for it. Even though I can't swim, okay? I was living vicariously through Aquaman, okay? I was here for it. The graphics, I loved it. But um, Amber Heard has a lot of issues, okay? And one thing about me, I, I'm, I'm going to be fair. Um... I've never cared about gender when it comes to abuse. And I hold women accountable just like I hold men accountable. I hold black folks accountable just like I hold white folks accountable. I keep the same energy, okay? Now, what I find very funny is that when the allegations came out against Johnny Depp, all the media was here for it. This was front page news all over the world. OK, because we all know Johnny Depp. He's been in all types of movies. When we we're growing up. Remember him, you know, Edward Scissorhands. Remember his hands were stuck together and shit. He was cutting them damn bushes. <laughs> Shout out to all the 90s kids out there. Who remembers Edward Scissorhands? OK, that, that was like my first introduction to him. I love Johnny Depp. Right. So. <laughs> so. But most most people know him from also uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. So when these allegations came out, Disney wasted no time. Literally four days after the allegations came out, it was off with Johnny Depp's head. They literally threw him off the damn Pirates of the Caribbean ship, sailed away, and that was it. So nobody ever really gave him a chance to rebuttal, you know, state what happened. It was just, she says you're guilty, you abused her, and that's the end of the story. Lucky for Johnny Depp, he was smart enough to record some phone conversations or some private conversations, I should say, where Amber Heard admitted to also being an abuser, putting her hands on him, cut his finger. She put that man through a bunch of hell. And what was so funny is that when the, when the proof was coming out, the media was very, very quiet with this. I'm like, excuse me, where's the Me Too movement? to hold her accountable. Cause remember she was like one of the leaders of me too. She used this to propel her me too career. And it was like, they were so hush hush about it. And I'm like, wait, he has receipts. She didn't even have receipts. She just got mad and went to the police. He actually has voice recordings, but the me too movement and the times up movement was very quiet. So I saw the game that they were playing and that's when I went and I just basically put it all together. Now, I want to play y'all a snippet of this really quick, of the audio. Make sure I still have that up. Yes, he was also on 21 Jump Street. I don't really remember that show like that. I didn't really watch it. Wasn't Janet Jackson on there? I don't, it was, I don't know, honey. It was That's a that's an old 80s show. But I remember 21 Jump Street, but I don't remember watching it. Let me play y'all this audio of Amber Heard that the mainstream media chose to ignore for months. Give me a second here. The fuck, you know, whatever, because I just been hit in the head with the fucking corner of the door. I'm so sorry. I did not. I'm sorry. And then I stood up. And then you fucking clocked me. I, I remember hitting you as a response to the door thing. And I'm really sorry about hitting you with the door or hitting your head. I did not mean to ignore. You didn't mean to hit me in the head with the door, but you meant to I didn't punch mean, me in the jaw. I meant to hit you, and I I, I did not do this thing with the door. I, I do remember. I did mean to hit you. So that you didn't mean the door? No, God, no, I didn't. I'm, but punch me in the jaw. I didn't. Okay, I'm sorry I hit you. I didn't mean to hit you, but it was in, a res in response. I just reacted in response to my foot. I just reacted. And I'm sorry, it's below me. Your foot? That, that was why you punched me. Yeah. Fucking, I've showed myself. I've proven myself. I've fought for you. I've showed up. I'm not going to be in a physical fucking altercation don't. with you. Then don't. You fucking hit me last night. You fucking... Well, how the other times you split? Come on, you cannot act like that. It's about that. 
It's well, not. Well, on a plane, I can't split. No, and you hit back. So don't act like you don't fucking participate. I pushed you. I'm not going to get into the details of that fight. You and I both know that you split when there is no physical violence. We haven't really been good. It hasn't really been a safe environment, now has it? You act like you're fucking on something when I haven't, you know, sent you this. Like, well, send them to me. Get this. It hasn't been good. It's been a little tough. You take me for granted. It's not true. It's not true. I'm not the one who fucking throws fucking pots and that's different. That's different. Else at me. That's different. That's one does not negate the other. That's irrelevant. It's a complete non sequitur. Just because I throw pots and pans does not mean that you Basis. come and knock on the door. Just because there are vases does not mean that you come and knock on the door. Really? You just let you throw. I'm not saying that. You're saying that. You're putting words in my mouth and then making no, non sequitur. Giving you a situation. That's no. clear. Yeah. Do I do it? The only time I ever threw anything at you was when you fucking are you, threw the cans at me in Australia. Why are you trying to justify who throws things based because on whether or that, not you come knocking on the door? And because that is a fucking irrational either. and violent fucking maneuver. How so a man would want to get out of that area so that he doesn't get so fucking angry that he actually does pop the fucking wife. How does one inform the other? Oh, man. Go home and listen to the tape. All right, y'all. Let me come back on the screen here. Um, I saw people writing Holly Robinson Pete was on 21 Jump Street. Thank y'all for that. The show came out when I was like five or six, you guys. I'm not going to remember 21 Jump Street like that. That was not my era. But kudos to her. <laughs> I thought it was Janet Jackson. I don't know. I knew it was a black girl on there. Um, But yeah. <laughs> Y'all just heard the video, the audio. Amber Heard is batshit crazy, okay? And she has abused him. And a lot of times people don't like to talk about female on male abuse. You know, people will try and make it seem like, well, it's a woman. She really can't abuse a man. It's not the same thing. A hit is a hit. And some women, they can hit harder than some guys. Okay, let's keep that real. So I don't, I don't believe in all that just because somebody's a woman, um, she should be excused or that it's okay. And so when Johnny Depp brought those receipts, the, the, the media was very, very quiet. They weren't quick to condemn her. It was really the internet. It was really Twitter and Reddit that started petitions wanting to get him back on Pirates of the Caribbean, that started petitions letting people know that this woman is batshit crazy. And now he's suing her for defamation. I believe he's suing her for like $50 million or something like that because he lost a lot of money when he was fired from the Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, so she, she's a trip. Let's see here. DJ, DJ M. Cole sent 20 says, I have never left a comment or sent a super chat on YouTube in my 23 years, but I really want to thank you for your hard work. Your videos and lives have always given, given me a way to get through this year. Thank you very much. You are so welcome. And thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And I'm glad that my videos have helped you throughout the years. Um, Therapy Queen sent five says, thank you for being you. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you for the super chat. So uniquely me sent 20 says, hey, do you remember hearing this podcast? And I'm a little curious as to why they decide to fire her a year after that audio came out. It doesn't seem fair. We're going to get on that right now. Give me just a second. Um, Vivian Spencer says, praying for you, T, sending you all the positive energy. People of the world are always hard on the children of God. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Asia Muhammad says, hey, sis, you missed my first super chat. Speaking of the Me Too, watch the season of Law and Order SVU. It's interesting where this movement is headed. Oh, wow. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Thank you so much, sis. Um, Marlon Harrison sent 20. He says, love you, TPS, for telling me about the Indian lady. You are more than welcome. That is my home girl. I don't know how to pronounce her name. I'm not going to try. But you're talking about the WINO News. Yes. That's, the ch that's one of the channels they keep unsubscribing me from. I've had to resubscribe to them at least 10 times. But I'm here for them. They keep their foot on China's neck. And I love her. But um, so the, the whole Aquaman situation 
let me say this. I have been researching. And so I'm trying to get like, you know, real evidence that this woman has been fired. Because again, when it was Johnny Depp, this was global news. This was on every news station, CNN, MSNBC, Fox. But with this situation, I'm only seeing her being fired on Twitter. So I'm like, well, did she really get fired? So Yahoo News also reported on it. There's rumors that they want Amelia Clark, who played um, Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones, <laughs> Game of Thrones connection. They want her to, pro to possibly play the character that Amber Heard plays in Aquaman, which would be dope because as we all know, Amelia Clark and um, Jason Moma, they were called Drogo and Daenerys Targaryen. So that'd be dope to see them come back together, right? So that it's being reported that she was supposedly fired, but I found this article where they contacted her reps and it sounds like there's some shit in the mix and she may not really be fired. So let me show y'all this article here. Because I see a lot of people running with it and saying that she was fired, but I'm not really sure about that. So give me just a second. Okay, so basically what they're trying to say here is that they, they reached out to Amber Heard. So about four hours ago, she's saying that she thinks the WB, which is Warner Brothers Studio, is spreading the rumors about her being fired from Aquaman 2. So basically what she's saying is that she has not received any official notification from Warner Brothers that she's been fired. So they're saying here, according to insider Daniel Richmond, her thinks that WB are spreading the false reports to put pressure on her to resign rather than just sacking her. As news of her being fired will show, will show her that the public are not on her side. If true, this would be a pretty low move from the company, especially since they defended the star in the past after the initial court battle with Depp reached its verdict last year. In any case, here's what Richmond said on his Patreon account. So he was the one who kind of confirmed that she believes it's getting put out there by Warner Brothers Studio. So I know a lot of people are like, surprised to hear this because like I said I've been waiting for more legitimate news sources to really confirm that she's been fired the only news source I'm getting is Yahoo News and Twitter I'm not saying they're not accurate but something ain't cleaning the buttermilk now what bothers me is this why does Warner Brother have to tiptoe around and make her uncomfortable in hopes of her resigning but when it came to Disney they didn't make Johnny Depp uncomfortable they didn't send out, you know, pressure and say, hey, you wife beater. Hey, you abuser. They fired him within four days. So I'm confused. Why can't Warner Brother do the same for her? She's been proven to be a liar. There's receipts. And right now she's going through a huge defamation lawsuit. And honestly, I think I will personally boycott Aquaman too. As much as I love Jason Moma, and this is probably one of my favorite DC movies, I don't like Amber Heard. Even now, I get pissed off when I watch Aquaman because I really like the movie. And she did good. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to hate on her. She did a damn good job in the movie. But to know her character in real life is so shitty and demonic, I don't respect that. You know, because it's one thing to want to break up with somebody. You know, relationships go through things, ups and downs. It seems like their relationship was toxic anyways. But it's another thing to go out your way to try and destroy somebody and to try and destroy their reputation, their livelihood, that's the lowest of the low. And I don't respect that. And the fact that the industry is still treating her with kitten gloves is bullshit. Even when you go onto her Instagram page, oh, she limited her comments. Oh, don't, don't click on a picture and try and comment. <laughs> Ain't no comments. She limited all her comments. She can't take the heat, but when it was but when, when she was blaming Johnny Depp a year ago, when she was the, the media darling, oh, she was here for all the Johnny Depp slander. She was here for all the sympathy, the cards, the fruit baskets. But now that her truth is being revealed, now you can't comment on her page. Because I actually, you know, I, I tend to not ever comment on anybody's page like that or tell them about themselves. I just don't do that. But I was here to, you know, I went there to go read to see what folks were saying. You know, I'll take a screenshot quick and read some shit. I'm not going to leave a comment because I just don't do that. 
But yeah, when I went to her comments, I clicked on, you know, several pictures, comments disabled. So yeah, Amber Heard is a, is a weirdo. And, you know, again, this is also why I have to hold Johnny Depp accountable, okay? Why he did not deserve his abuse. He did not deserve being slandered. But this is where I want men to understand that sometimes the grass is not always greener on the other side. Because for y'all who don't know, Johnny Depp was with his baby's mother for like, child, 20 years. Never one time married the baby's mother. Okay, she bore his children. She, he never married her. He met Amber Heard, you know, because she's younger. Amber Heard is only like 34, right? Johnny Depp, I want to say he's like in his late 40s, maybe 50s. I don't know. I can't keep up. He met her and after a few months, left his baby's mother, he was creeping with Amber, left the baby's mother, married Amber Heard, thinking the grass was greener on the other side. See, I'ma speak facts and I'ma I'm, I'm tell it all. And this is why a lot of times men need to be very, very careful because the way he left the baby's mother and ran to Amber Heard, the younger woman, what I get from that situation is Amber Heard is nothing more than a Jezebel spirit. And that's true T. For her to entice him, snatch him up, you know, it takes two, of course, and then put him through all of that. Because remember, she's also, to me, kind of a social climber. Because remember, before she, before she got with Johnny Depp, she was gay. I don't know if y'all know that. She was a lesbian. Let's talk about that. All of a sudden, the A-list movie star tries to holler at her. And all of a sudden, I'm not gay no more. I am delivered. So I was very confused about their union. I said, well, damn, weren't you with your baby's mother and aren't you gay? Now y'all are together? Mm. I got Jezebel spirit tease. I'm sorry. In that whole union. I mean, yes, thank you, Sonia. She's young enough to be his daughter. Like I said, I don't know his exact age. I can put it in the chat. I'm assuming he might be 50. But yeah, before they got together, she was gay. She left her girlfriend and then was straight. And her and Johnny were married for about two years. So he probably would have been better off with his baby's mother and marrying somebody he'd been with for years who put up with his shit and, you know, bore his children and everything else. But he thought he found something younger and more fun in Amber Heard. And all she did was basically use him like the sub like the subacus or whatever it's called, subsecus. <laughs> I hate that word. It's hard to pronounce. Like the subsecus she is. She basically sucked him up, sucked up his energy, ruined his career, and he's having to pick up the pieces. And she's been able to just kind of skate. And I don't like that. I'm not here for it. I just think the way that the industry has treated her versus how they treated Johnny, and especially when Johnny Depp came with receipts, that look, I was not the abuser in this relationship. If you guys listen to that whole video, she admits to putting hands on him. She's apologizing. And then she says, no one's going to believe you because I'm a woman. That's wicked. That's using your gender as a weapon. She weaponized her gender because she knew she's a white woman. She can cry tattoo tears and nobody's going to question her. I did and so did Reddit. Fuck her. Anybody can get it over here. So, yeah, the whole situation is a mess. Let me see if you ever put his age in here. Oh, he's 50. Oh, damn, he's damn near 60. He's 57. Wow. So yeah, they're 40, what, 23 year age difference? Mm. Yeah. He's old enough to be her daddy, honey. Suck Cubus. Thank you, Coffee Me. She she broke it down. Suck Cubus. Thank you. That word is always hard for me to pronounce, but I'm glad y'all know what I'm talking about. That's the vibe I got from Amber Heard. She used him and his energy to come up. I'm not saying nobody knew who she was before this because she did get that huge role in Aquaman. You know, she had a career, but trust me, she elevated because she became the victim of Johnny Depp. 
who's a longtime A-lister, who, you know, has had a, you know, a decent reputation. He's not perfect, but he's had a decent reputation in Hollywood. He's been able to maintain all these years. Here, he, hell, he's 57 years old. And she basically just ran him through the ringer. So, yeah, that whole Amber Heard situation is a mess. Oh, Elton says, miss you, T. I miss you, too. Thank you so much for coming to the live stream, love. Let's see here. Um, Lunar Galaxy says, yes, that was the oops there. The moment of, hold on. Yes, this was an oops. There is a moment for dear Johnny. Yeah, this definitely was. And I hope this is a lesson learned for him and other men who are out here trying to run and, and, you know, run behind some of these young girls, you don't understand that some of these young women are some of the biggest hustlers, scammers, and they will use you to get to where they're trying to go. And he learned that fat meat is greasy and it's messed up. Not, not excusing her whatsoever. What I'm saying is that love should have kept him home with his baby's mother. Love should have had him marrying his baby's mother. And not running behind a 34-year-old who done just basically sullied his name and his reputation. Um, Diamond Cooks in 499, she says, hey, T, you have to watch the Stand miniseries. Her character on there resembles her real self. Love you, T. Keep doing you. Thank you so much for the super chat, love, and thanks for the tip. Um, let's see here. Oya D sent five. She says, you can pronounce it. It's succubus. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat. I'm like, I said, I'm glad y'all knew what I was trying to say because, honey, it's it's worthy. And sometimes, y'all know English is not like my first first language. It's one of my other languages. So, honey, words get mixed up in my brain. Sorry. Um, K. Bob says Amber is a succubus. <laughs> Makes sense because aren't the other two M two women witches? What are the M two? I'm not sure what that means. Oh, Me Too? Oh, M2, Me Too. The one, who was the one? Rose McGowan definitely practices in the dark arts, but who was the one? Remember, she was up there with Rose McGowan, the one that was dating Anthony Bourdain, the one I was like, I believe that she had something to do with his death. With, and her daddy was in the industry. He makes all those dark films. I know y'all know who I'm talking about. Somebody write her name because her name is like escaping me. She was Rose McGowan's friend and she was messing with the 17 year old. Remember she was me too and everybody. And then the 17 year old was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Asia Argento, Asia Argento, thank y'all. <laughs> yes, that witch. Yes, she's a witch for sure. I believe she's a red witch. Now remember she was the main one, her and Rose McGowan. They were spearheading in the me too movement, honey. Oh, they was here for it. Harvey Weinstein. This person, that person. And then all of a sudden, the, the little young boy came out and he was like, but Asia Argento, you slept with me and I played your son in a movie. And Asia Argento was smashing him at 17. Remember when I'm, I covered that. For all y'all who swept him down, I don't cover white tea. Y'all can go back in my archives. I drug Asia Argento and Rose McGowan because I found it very funny that you had all this energy when it was men being accused, which I agree. If you're a, if you're guilty of of you know the essay word sexual assault, if you're guilty of that, you should be handled. But why is it when it comes to her friend and her fellow witch, all was crickets? I said, so nobody's gonna call out Asia Argento. Shit, hold my damn tea. I'm gonna call her ass out. Yeah. So a lot of people, I'm glad y'all remember. I'm glad y'all remember that video because folks were up and down. Oh, I only talk about black people's mess. But they, they, when it comes to me talking about white folks and their mess, oh, see no evil, hear no evil. Oh, she never talks about the white man. Thank y'all for confirming in the chat. I'm glad y'all remember that video when I drug Asia Argento and damn Rose McGowan. Okay. So I found that very, very funny that a lot of these leaders of the Me Too movement, they're very quiet. I don't even really see them dragging her. You know, once Johnny Depp came with the receipts, they were real quiet. I didn't hear nothing from Rose McGowan. You know, but when it came to her accusing everybody else, oh, you couldn't question anything her or Asia Argento had to say. 
And whatever happened to Asia Argento? I remember I ended up on her page one day. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, I was on Madonna's page. She was in the comment section. <laughs> I was on Madonna's page being nosy child, just walking around Instagram. Like, what the hell is Madonna doing her old ass? You know, Madonna's always up on some, some goofy shit. So I'm out of my business. I'm on Madonna's page. And I'm going through the comments. And I see Asia Argento. Bitch, what you doing here? Ain't you supposed to be in jail? Why are you out here commenting and key keying? Weren't you smashing the 17 year old Mrs. Me Too? Ain't nothing happened to her either. This was like two years ago. Ain't nothing happened to none of them women. It's a shame. So I don't respect this. Yeah, Madonna is a weirdo. <laughs> I brought you Madonna. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, we grew up in the 90s, honey. You know, Vogue and all that shit. But Madonna is a weirdo. She be on some weird shit. So every now and then I have to, you know, go to her Instagram and just be nosy. Like, what's Madonna up to now? What, how are the black children doing? That's really why I go on there. Go see what her black kids are up to. <laughs> Like, how is, how is Mercy and how's David? I ain't seen David since she got them damn booty implants. Remember when Madonna got her ass done and she had David on the stage singing? <laughs> and nobody was paying attention to nothing David was singing because Madonna's ass was like out to here. And then I was like, why did Madonna get these butt implants? And her son is like trying to sing, hey, welcome to the show. And now you see is Madonna's ashes. <laughs> Madonna's a trip. I don't follow her, but every now and then I go to her page to see what she's up to with them damn black children. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Madonna's ass was big. I said, what the hell is Madonna doing? She's about this big. And she looked like the letter P. Her ass was out to here. And poor David's trying to sing and everybody's just looking at Madonna's ass. Nobody's paying David no mind. <laughs> Man, that whole situation was a mess. Oh, we got 10,000 people in here. Hey, you guys, welcome. If you guys are enjoying the stream, please make sure you hit the like button. It's free. I appreciate y'all. Yes, Madonna was on that stage looking like the letter P. I said, okay, sis, we see you. <laughs> um, Ashley Naja says, I've been watching you since ninth grade, and I'm now working on my second bachelor's. And you are still here. God bless no man curse. Thank you so much. And congratulations on getting your bachelor's degrees. I'm, I'm really proud of you. Thank you so much, sis. Um, let's see here. Jojo Senten says, see, and this is why I can't stand the Me Too movement nowadays. Hollywood messed it up. People are clout chasing nowadays and the media feeds into it. Exactly. And that's the problem with a lot of these, these movements on social media. And that's why... I get so upset when people conflate issues because what happens is when you're conflating issues and you're just throwing everybody under just one big umbrella, it cheapens the movement for people who are real victims of these people. And that's the problem. When you have, you know, shady leaders like Asia Argento screaming from the rooftops of what, you know, of, of, of Italy, Italy, saying you know what harvey weinstein did to her meanwhile she was smashing a 17 year old it just cheapens the movement and that was my issue with the whole r kelly situation we know that there are r kelly victims r kelly's been a pervert since i was a child this is nothing new but when you got grown women in their 30s in 2016 taking their asses to r kelly's house and they know what he's about they're cheapening the movement for the real victims for the real for the real young people who went through who didn't know and that's what happens when we conflate issues and we just mix everybody in to these different movements because then after a while people just throw their hands up and they just don't care let's see here um missy bond says love should have brought him home mm. brought him home to his baby's mother he should have been with her should have been right by her side. I definitely agree. And thank you so much for the super chat, sis. Um, let's see here. Oh, somebody sent $100. Leantho Speaks sent $100. Thank you so much. Um, they said, I'm just glad I caught the live. Love you, T. Stay safe. Thank you so much. And thank you for that super chat. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so look, somebody says, R. Kelly's innocent, lovely teeth, free R. Kelly. Child, um, I'm not the judge, jury, or executioner of the R. Kelly case. 
you got to go talk to the judge about that. You know, um, I don't think R. Kelly's innocent. He has done a lot of messed up stuff, but a lot of them women, they were clout chasing, period, point blank. They were clout chasing. And I've always said that from day one, and I got attacked for saying that, you know. But um, it, it's a lot of stuff. You know, it's a lot of things that go on in the industry. There's a lot of things that go on with these different celebrities. And this is why, you know, a lot of these movements, people are just kind of tired of them. There's a lot of just, you know, debauchery and, and you know, indecency that goes on. Now, as far as the whole TI situation, let me see how long have I been on here? Oh, I've been on here already an hour. Don't even feel like it, y'all. I'm going to keep going. Hopefully, I ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah, they're, they're saying that. I, I don't think he's innocent. I think he's done a lot of stuff. And y'all got to realize, too, karma's real. R. Kelly's done a lot of stuff in the past that he's gotten away with. Okay? And if he was smart, just like with O.J. Simpson, how many times in life do you get away with murdering somebody? I believe he murdered them people. I don't give a damn what nobody says. And instead of sending his ass down and getting away with murder, <laughs> okay, he chose to still just be out here just doing whatever, just like R. Kelly. He, he really lucked up by getting away during that trial because the families were so obsessed with the money, they didn't care about the niece's well-being. So he really lucked up by getting off on that first case. So you would think that that would have humbled him. Oh no, not R. Kelly. He had that 19 year old girlfriend, Haley. And granted, Haley's of age, you know, she's, she's grown enough to be with R. Kelly, but it just looks suspect. It's like, you still out here dating people in their teens, <laughs> even if they are 19, as opposed to getting somebody at least 30, you know? And this is what happens when folks get comfortable. So I guess we can use this to segue into TI. Um, let's see here. Uh, Deja Wilkinson says, WB did Ray Fisher bad, but Amber gets the world treatment. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. I still have not seen an official letter, an official tweet, official nothing from Warner Brothers Studio. But like I said, when it came to Disney, oh, they they put a, a official, honey, they had the Mickey Mouse head on the damn letterhead and shit. Disney. <laughs> Disney released a statement. Johnny Depp is no longer with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Warner Brother hasn't done that. So at this point, I don't really feel like she's been fired. I feel like there's rumblings and maybe they're hoping that this pressure will make her resign. But she's not. She's arrogant. She's not. She's going to want to play victim. So I don't see her resigning. But yeah, they didn't give that same, you know, nonsense energy to Johnny Depp, though. Let's see here. Um, Queen B sent 499. She says, crazy, we're talking about me, too. And I just finished watching Taurus TV's video on Trey Songs and all his allegations. What a coincidence. Yeah, I've heard some things about Trey Songs too. The whole situation's a mess. I remember when Kiki Palmer was calling him out and people drug her, you know, and didn't believe her. And then I think it was like the young white girl came out. It was like an old recording somebody found that went viral on Twitter. And they were talking about, and I think Nicole from the Pussycat Dolls, it was an old recording of her talking about Trey songs and how he invites girls over there and nobody drugged them. So yeah, it's a shame. Uh, Aaron Va Void, Vod, sorry, Aaron Vod. Sam 49, he says, Rose McGowan worked with conviction with convicted pedo director Victor Slava in, in 2011 and basically dismissed what he said. I didn't even know that. But see, again, it just goes to show you Rose McGowan's hypocrisy. She's been a hypocrite from day one. Matter of fact, let me ask y'all, has she said anything about Marilyn Manson? Because you know they're trying to meet to his ass too. Folks are coming out against Marilyn Manson. Remember, Rose McGowan used to date him. Remember the MTV Awards. Man, I miss when MTV was the shit. The MTV Awards were the shit back in like the late 90s, early 2000s. Remember she wore that see-through dress with her ass cheeks out? It was just a bunch of strings. Who remembers that dress that she wore to the MTV Awards with Marilyn Manson? It was just a bunch of black strings and her butt was hanging out. <laughs> Yeah, she used to be with um, Marilyn Manson. 
Okay, I'm glad the 90s babies remember that. Y'all remember that dress? I haven't seen anything, but has she spoken out about Marilyn Manson at all? Because I don't really follow, I don't follow her. Okay, yeah, I do remember that dress. That's good. Man, the MTV Awards, I had posted something the other day about ODB. Let me see if I can find it while we're talking about the MTV Awards. This is why I love the 90s because people didn't give a shit. ODB, he was just the shit. I love ODB. A lot of people didn't know that ODB was as woke as he was until after he died. Facts. Let me show y'all this video I posted. It was the 25th year anniversary of when ODB crashed the MTV, uh, excuse me, not MTV, the Grammy Awards stage. Who remembers this when he crashed the Grammys? He is, I don't know, I don't care. This, this, this video literally lives rent-free in my head. So I have posted this the other day. <laughs> I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm sorry. That video lives rent free in my head. Who remembers that ODB video? Stand up. That's when the Grammys was lit. MTV Awards was lit. These award shows now are trash. Who remembers that? Rest in peace to ODB. I had to post that. I'm like, we're going to show ODB some love today. That video lives in my head rent free. That happened in 1998. And what was so funny, he just like literally interrupted. He's like, hold up. I just spent this money on this nice suit. Uh-uh. Puffy's good, but Wu-Tang is better. Wu-Tang is for the children. <laughs> And all us kid Wu-Tang fans, we was here for it. We was like, yeah, Wu-Tang is for the children. <laughs> and it was so funny because I didn't realize that the babies thought that Kanye West was the first person to storm the stage. I said, Kanye? Kanye learned from ODB. Kanye interrupting Taylor Swift for Beyonce was nothing compared to ODB doing that. And it was so funny because it's like the way he did it. Everybody's looking like, damn, well, what, what's going on? He's hold on, turn down the music. Like ODB did not care. They done turned it down. Everybody's looking at him. He's like, yeah, I want to spend a lot of money on this suit. Wu-Tang is for the children. <laughs> and then Erica Badu was just sitting there like, oh, okay, I'm going to just wait till he's done before I give him this award. And then the white lady, I think her name was Sean. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do now. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Man, that was a moment right there. And then we got the reminiscing in the comments. Who remembers when Rage Against the Machine, they climbed up on the rafters on during the MTV uh, movie, uh, Music Awards live. They climbed up there. And so everybody's like, what is going on? They done climbed up there. He's shaking the shit. MTV scared that it's about to fall and break. And then they had security make them come down. And then Kid Rock was like, what are we raging for? Why are we raging? Are we raging for this? It was just, it's like the funniest moment. I got to go back and watch like old award shows from like the late 90s and 2000s. Those were the best. They were the best. Y'all remember that when Rage Against the Machine climbed up there? I used to love, that's when Kid Rock was the shit. That's when Fred Durst was the shit, man. We used to have like some good, so just, I don't know, a lot of good music back then and good award shows, you know, or like when Eminem was rapping and he was uh, doing the uh, the song where he dissed Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears. And then he goes and he tries to give like Carlson Daly, who was the host that time, a high five. And, you know, Fred Durst was in the audience. It was a mess. Those were good times. They really were. Those were like really good times. Deidre says, girl, I miss those old shows. Me too. The new award shows now are just boring. I usually fall asleep before they're over. But I'm telling you back then, you never knew what was going to happen. But that Grammy interruption by ODB is a classic. I don't care. That and then Suge Knight. <laughs> Suge Knight talking about Diddy. That's another um, award show, the Source Awards. That's another video that lives in my head rent free. It really is. The 90s, they didn't care. We told her how it was. We kept it real. If you didn't like it, oh, well. This generation, honey, is so sensitive. 
You know, if ODB would have did that now, he'd be canceled. He'd be straight up canceled the same way they canceled Kanye West and they sent him on that whole humiliation tour where he was talking to Jay Leno with his head bowed down like he was a little child and stuff. ODB said, I said what I said. When people try to ask him, why did you get up there and crash the stage? He said, because I bought a new suit. I spent a lot of money. We were nominated. We should have won. Why else did I get up there? <laughs> Man, oh yeah, Eminem threatening to fight Moby. Oh my gosh, y'all are bringing it back. Yeah, those shows were the, the I'm telling you, the 90s and the th the early 2000s was a shit. This, this generation, and I'm not saying everybody in this generation because everybody in this generation is not sensitive, but this whole cancel culture, the it's always somebody trending for something and people canceling them. And then when you go to see why they're being canceled, you're like, Get the fuck out of here. Take my ass back to Instagram or something. It's a mess. So I want to go ahead, because I've been on here already for an hour. Um, let's talk about the T.I. situation. So now this broke today, y'all. Now this whole situation with T.I. is getting messy. Now initially, um, it came out that they were saying that supposedly there were no litigations. There were no charges being brought up against T.I. and Tiny. Well, now there's a lawyer and he's asking for charges to be brought up against them. Like he's asking for like an investigation. And also Sabrina Peterson, the woman who started all of this, um, she's suing T.I., Tiny and Shekinah Joe. OK, so why Shekinah want to jump into something and, you know, run her mouth. She's now being included in the lawsuit. So we have two situations going on. OK, yes, Andrea. Wu-Tang forever. <laughs> we had two situations going on. One, Sabrina is suing these three people. And then now they're trying to also put together a criminal investigation against T.I. and Tiny. So let me start with the first. So give me a second here to just share my screen with y'all real quick. So Sabrina is planning to sue. And these are the documents here you guys can see. It says Sabrina Peterson, Superior Court of the State of California, for the County of Los Angeles, Sabrina Peterson, an individual plaintiff, Clifford Harris, Tamika Harris, and Shekinah Joe Anderson. So that is all of their names here. And basically she's doing this um, because of defamation. She's wanting to sue for damages. So here she's also saying that she suffered great mental, physical, and a nervous pain and suffering. As a result of such severe emotional distress, Plaintiff Peterson has been generally, specifically, and consciously damaged to an amount to be established according to the evidence. So she is going after them big time. So now let me show y'all think this is the one. Okay. It was two different stories. Okay. So this is one here. So an attorney has asked authorities to launch an investigation against Clifford T.I. Harris and his wife, Tiny Tamika Harris. After dozens of women have come forward with allegations of sexual abuse, according to a pre-release from the New York-based T.A. Blackburn Law. More than 30 women have contacted him and have accused the couple of and their associates of forced drugging, kidnapping, the R word, and intimidation in at least two states, including California and Georgia. These criminal allegations span over 15 years of methodical, sadistic abuse against women in various venues throughout the country. The release continues. These individual claims paint an paint eerily consistent allegations of women prior to or upon immediately entering Tiny and T.I.'s home, hotel, or tour bus were coerced by Tiny to ingest drugs or unknowingly administer drugs to impair the victim to impair the victims. Then they go on to say this, according to the New York Times attorney, Tyrone Blackburn is representing 11 of the accusers. However, the couple's attorney, Steve Sadow, denied the accusations to the Times, calling it a shakedown. 
We fully expect that these claims are thoroughly and fairly investigated. No charges will be forthcoming, says Steve Sadow in a statement to the Times on Friday. These allegations are nothing more than continuations of sword shakedown campaigns that began on <laughs> that began on social media and now attempts to manipulate the press and misuse the, ju the justice system. There was another story in here. Let me see. It might be on this one. They were talking about how Tiny was bathing people. Okay, here goes the story here. Um, so they're saying in this one, a letter sent to federal authorities in Georgia and California, the, law the law lawyer Tyrone A. Blackburn, who is representing the 11 victimized women, alleged sexual abuse, forced ingestion of illegal narcotics, kidnapping, terroristic threats, and false imprisonment against the rapper Clifford Harris and his wife spanning from 2005 to 2018. Five of the women cited in the letters claimed that they were armed or sexually assaulted by the couple. One of the women, a military veteran, says she was drugged by the couple after meeting them at a club. She was later taken to their hotel room experiencing <clears throat> the effects of the alleged drugging where she claimed Tiny bathed her and T.I. And then the three of them engaged in sex during which the woman vomited. The next thing she remembers, she was waking up naked on the couch with a towel thrown on her with a very sore vagina, the letter states. Friends of the woman corroborated her story to the Times. <sighs> Y'all, this situation just got real. Yeah, this entire situation just got very, very real. Now, again, it's not for me to say who's guilty, who's innocent. That is for the courts. But like I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Now, from what I also read, there's over 30 accusers, right? There's a total of 30. But 11 of them are accusing T.I. and Tiny together. The other accusers are accusing their entourage. <clears throat> so they're saying like either their security or their friends or, you know, their entourage, you know, are them, drug them, did the same thing. So basically maybe the ones that T.I. and Tiny may not have been interested in, they were passed to the entourage because it's a total of 30 people. So it looks like this is getting really serious. Um, and I just think the whole thing is just kind of, it's, it's very sad that it got so out of hand. Because when you think about it, it was just simply Sabrina coming out of nowhere, starting mess and saying that T.I. put a gun to her head. And then it just went from there to like all these women coming out and sharing their stories. And like I said, were there some fake confessions in the mix? Absolutely. But a lot of those confessions that were also posted on her page were not fake. And if you really go back and look at some of the timelines and the people that T.I. was hanging around, because I know a lot of this seems to have taken place while he was on tour or at concerts. Um, people were even saying, the, one of the stories I remember they were talking about T.I. and Nelly. Nelly's name came up in one of the stories. And if you remember, Nelly was also accused a few years back of, you know, doing some things to women on his tour bus. So, you know, the whole thing is just really, really disturbing. But again, this is why I say that this is why people need to be very, very mindful of the things that they engage in. You know, everybody wants to push this whole freaky deaky culture. And again, what you choose to do with two consenting adults with your partner is your business. But you also need to realize that sometimes what's just a freak fest to you can be something that damages somebody mentally, spiritually. And this is why folks need to really watch who they bring into their bedroom. because And it seems to me like they brought so many people into their bedrooms over the years they don't even know where to begin. I'm, I'm sure some of these people, they don't know the names. They don't recognize them because it was just a bust down situation. You know, and that's where it gets, it, that's where it just gets very, very disturbing because you have a power dynamic here. 
And even though, you know, some of these people might be adults or young adults, let's say 2021, there's still a power dynamic. You know that the average person is so celebrity struck that they're willing to do things and engage in things that they ordinarily would not do. And this is where we also have to be smart as women. I said, I said the same thing years ago and people tried to say I was victim shaming. Fuck that. I'm going to speak real to young women. If you're not going to jump on a tour bus with a random guy that you don't know, if you wouldn't get into a car with Raheem or Tyrone or, you know, Aaron, just somebody that you don't know, use that same logic when it comes to some of these celebrities. Just because you watch their music videos, just because you listen to their songs, just because you watch their movies, you never truly know these people. And everybody does not have your best interest at heart. So if that's victim shaming, it is what it is. I'd rather put it out there to warn young girls. Keep your vigilance up and don't let your guard down because it's a name that you recognize, because it's somebody that you've seen on TV. You don't know them. You just know what they put out there. You just know that persona. You don't know who they are behind the scenes. And a lot of these people dabble in drugs and do all types of stuff. So while you're thinking you're going backstage or going to their tour bus to just, you know, drink and smoke and have a good time, you don't know what they're putting in those drinks that they're mixing. You know, and anytime it comes to the R, it's not even about sexual gratification. It's about power. Same thing that, you know, Bill Cosby was accused of. He had a whole wife. It's not even about the sex. It's about the power. It's about knowing that you have somebody in a vulnerable situation and they're willing to do something because of who you are. You know, this is really scary. It's really scary. And I was hoping that, okay, being that we haven't heard anything, that maybe it's going to go away quietly. But now that they're trying to, you know, start an investigation, where there's smoke, there's possibly fire. And this is why also as women, you have to love yourself enough to know that you don't have to do everything that your man wants to do. If you're uncomfortable being in a three-way situation or having threesomes or it just doesn't feel right, don't get involved. Because now, you know, Tiny trying to keep her man and keep him satisfied, she's drug into all this mess. You know? And from what the, the paperwork is saying, they're both just as guilty, allegedly. So this is like really, really serious stuff. And this is really scary. And um, again, it's, it's a power dynamic. And that's why I, I got on James Charles. And I see so many of these young girls, man, like they just want to excuse this behavior. And, oh, people are just clout chasing. People are, like, the, the whole clout chasing word, it, it's just, y'all use it when it doesn't fit. You know, it's one thing to clout chase because you want to get followers for something stupid. It's another thing when it comes to, you know, somebody violating you sexually. I don't care how much a 16-year-old is supposedly clout chasing. Explain to me why a 21-year-old man has news in a 16-year-old's phone. So y'all can't explain that. Y'all dismiss stuff away by saying it's clout chasing because it makes you sleep better at night. But you're not asking yourself, why does a 21-year-old man see somebody he thinks is cute? And instead of him just, okay, well, he's cute. Okay, I'm going to follow him. His mentality is to send him nudes. That's not normal. I see cute people every day. I'm always on somebody's Instagram page. Damn, he's cute. I've never once thought because I, I think somebody's cute to slide into their DMs and just send them nudes of myself. Not saying they'd even want to see them, but I'm just saying. So why is that his thought? I don't Am I freezing, y'all? Oh, Lord. I guess I'm talking about some deep stuff, honey. Okay, I think I'm back. I had to like literally, like everything froze. It went black. I couldn't see, I couldn't hear. Nothing was moving, so I had to pull up my phone. I seen I was still live. Okay, good. See, that's what I'm talking about. As soon as I talk about real stuff, 
Here comes YouTube messing with my stream, making everything crash. That was crazy. Like everything went black and like my whole screen just froze. I couldn't see myself. I couldn't see y'all's comments. So I had to go on my phone. This just sucks. I hate this. Cause it's like, as soon as you start talking, as soon as I start talking about that little golden boy of YouTube, y'all see what happens. It's like, you cannot talk about him and his antics unless you're praising him and getting your bait, your face beat by him. You can't talk about him. They literally just froze my whole screen and made it crash. Okay. Okay. I think it's working now. Guess I gotta go back to talking about the black people. <laughs> All right, back to T.I. and Tiny. I think I'm back on. If not, I'm gonna leave, but I think it's working now. This is just ridiculous at this point. This is just ridiculous. But that's what I'm talking about. You cannot talk about certain people on this platform. Uh, Kendra said 1999. She says, catch the playback. Just sending you love. Thank you so much, sis. Appreciate you. But yeah, so with the TI situation, it looks like, you know, it's getting real and we're just going to have to watch and see like, you know, what evidence they come out with. But this is why what I was talking about before we think crash is the power dynamic and people using their fame and their celebrity status to take advantage of people, you know, and like I said, I don't knock what people do in the bedroom. That is your business. I'm not here to police people's bedrooms. I'm not here to be the sex cop. That's not my place. What I'm saying is if you're going to engage in something like that, engage with it with people who have things to lose. Meaning, get down with folks who are on your same level financially, status-wise, because when the power dynamic is different and you're messing with people who are broke, who don't have money, that's the easiest way for them to try and come up if they really, you know, choose to. And on top of that, it can let it can make them, you know, feel empty afterwards. Like they were just being used and now you're on to the next. And I think that's the case with T.I. and Tiny. I think that's what might have been going on is that they were messing with so many people. And a lot of these women, you know, definitely feel away. And I think the whole Sabrina thing kind of just started the ball rolling, you know, giving people drugs, you know, all the stuff that they're being accused of. There's no excuse for that. Especially when you have grown adults who are willing to do that because you are a celebrity, they'd be willing to do that sober. So the fact that they're introducing uh, drugs to the situation and, you know, girls are being knocked out, not remembering certain things, this is what's being alleged is really disturbing. So to me, it's more about power than even the sex, because that'd be the only reason why drugs would be introduced. So you could have more power over them to just do whatever it is that you want to do against their will. So, yeah, it's, it's really disturbing. Yeah. And that's another thing, too, is. People need to realize if somebody is incapacitated, if they're high on drugs, even if they're of age. If they're drunk, intoxicated, or high off drugs, consent is out the window. You can't get somebody high and then say that they consented. Somebody can't be drug, I mean, drunk and consent. It's not going to stand. So this is really disturbing. And I know a lot of people have been talking about the, the younger girl, Deja, you know, her mental health, her well-being, you know, how she's doing in the midst of all of this. I don't know. You know, I haven't like checked. I haven't heard anything. Haven't checked her social media, but I hope she's okay. Because I know a lot of people really worry about her because she's very sensitive. To me, she's a full blown empath. That's the that's the vibe I get from Deja. She's definitely an empath. But I feel bad for all the kids. I mean, these are serious allegations. I mean, you may you don't have to like Ti or Tiny. That's your business. But you know, they've definitely raised some good children. I mean, you don't see them out there like that. You don't see the boys out there you know, fighting and gangbanging and being involved in a bunch of mess. Now, King, he's kind of off the chain, you know, but for the most part, the older boys and the little younger one, you don't see them involved in a bunch of mess. So I definitely feel bad for all the kids because these are their parents and they're having to hear this about their parents. 
So this is really disturbing. But if there's victims, it's not okay. Especially young victims. It's never okay for somebody to use their power and their influence to take advantage of other people. Especially in a sexual situation. Um, let's see here. Angela Henderson sent 20. She says, YT is a hot mess. It really is. It really is, sis. Thank you for the super chat. Um, Prio Santan and says, thank you. Thank you so much, sis. Trey B13 OP says, hey T, I've been watching you since 2010. I love your channel. It's disgusting that you can't even speak your mind and state your opinion. Thank you so much. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's frustrating. That's what I'm saying that a lot of people are just really tired of like the antics on YouTube. They only want certain things talked about. But my thing is, is these are real situations. These are real things that people go through on a daily basis. So if people like me and others can't come on here and talk real, especially to younger people who may not feel comfortable talking to their parents about this or who don't have an older sister or older brother to talk to about this, is that not why we had these type of platforms? But again, if I was up here talking about Oh, who gives a shit? You know, just get with a celebrity, try and get pregnant by them, try and get that bag. Oh, the stream would be flawless. But as soon as you're telling young girls, you know what I'm saying, to protect themselves, and young boys too, this is, you know, a two-way street, either gender, because there's a lot of male predators out here too. And as soon as you're, you're trying to give out those warnings, they want to mess up the stream. So again, like I was saying, be mindful of some of these people that you contact on social media. Be mindful of their agendas. We excuse a lot of stuff because it's social media. We act like social media is a whole different realm from the real world. Think about it. In what world would a parent allow their 16-year-old to be best friends with a 21-year-old? I'm talking about Charlie D'Amelio um, and James Charles. You know, they're best friends. He runs around with these with these kids. I have a 15-year-old. He couldn't be walking out of my house with a 21-year-old. Where, where are you and your homeboy going? What's this about? You have nothing in common with a 15 or 16-year-old, not when you're 21. At 21, you're able to get into the club. You're able to drink. You're trying to party. You're trying to live your best life. Why would you want a 16-year-old tagging along? That makes no sense. I believe the reason why he's trying to hang with these younger kids on TikTok, and I said that before, I'm going to say real quick before they mess up the stream again. That's part of the grooming process. Let me hang with these young kids, look young, be as young as possible. So that way, when I slide into a 16-year-old's DMs, their guard is down because why? I hang with 16-year-olds. I see the BS for what it is. It's no different than all the grown men who used to try and hang out with us when we were in high school. You know how the grown men who would come up there and pick up, you know, your homegirls and pick y'all up after school. And, you know, when you look back on it, like, you're 27. Like, why were you picking us up after school any damn way? Why are you hanging out with sophomores and juniors? You're 27 years old. Because by the time I got to be 25, 26, 27, there was nothing I had in common with somebody in high school. You know? So a lot of times people surround themselves with younger people because they have nefarious reasons, because they're trying to look for the girl or the boy from the broken home who doesn't have a parent or a sibling or somebody who cares about their well-being. That's why they're hanging around younger people. And people need to watch out for that. And if, you're, if your gut instinct tells you that something doesn't feel right, listen to your gut instinct. You don't owe nobody anything. At the end of the day, you have one life to live. If something happens to you, there's no coming back from that. So if you have a gut feeling that something doesn't feel right, this person doesn't feel right, the things that they're saying make you uncomfortable, leave the situation. So all these people want to troll this young boy and say he's a clout chaser and everything else. Again, for people who have that mentality that he's a clout chaser, ask yourself, why is a 21-year-old who didn't even know that he admitted himself, only knew the person a few, you know, a few days. Why is he so quick to send his fully naked nudes out there to a stranger? Because this person was a stranger, regardless of age. I don't care if this was another 21 year old. You didn't know them long enough to send your damn naked pictures out. And I know people will say, well, people do it all the time, T. Have you ever, you never been in your DMs and just somebody sends you a random dick? Yes, we've all gotten random dick pics and I've gotten them. 
But the point is, he is a celebrity. He is a huge influencer with millions of followers, millions of kids who look up to him. That's the difference. The weirdo just sending out peen pics to everybody on Instagram. He has no damn following. That's why he's sending out random peen pics. There's a big, you can't compare the random peen in your DM to James Charles. So let's stop the foolishness and the excuses. I get random peen pics all the time. Yeah, but is, is a peen attached to a major celebrity? I think not. <laughs> well, let's keep that real. We all get them. But nine times out of 10, they're not attached to James Charles. That is the difference. So on that note, you guys, I've been on here for a while. Please hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. This has been a great stream. I've been on for an hour and 35 minutes. Again, I apologize about the, the freeze up, but there's not much I can do about that, you know. But um, I have another podcast coming, so I should have another podcast ready by tomorrow for you guys. But thank y'all for just coming through. Thank y'all for um, the love. Thank you guys for the super chats, for the comments. I feel a lot better and I'm glad I was just able to just kind of really express myself at the beginning of the stream. I'm glad I took a break. You know what I'm saying? Because I needed that break for, you know, the past two and a half weeks. But it does feel good to be back on live. And once again, thank you to everybody who came to the Game of Thrones party. We're definitely going to have to do something like that again, maybe for like another show. Like we can binge watch another show and then we just do another like party. Where we just talk about it because I had a really awesome time. So before I leave, let me read these last super chats. Um, XO Lynn sent 4 dollars She says, I agree and push... I agree the push of threesomes need to stop. Uh, it puts bi and lesbian women at risk. Oh, wow. How? I don't really know how. Somebody explain that. Like, do you feel like it puts them at risk because it's pressuring them to engage in something that they ordinarily wouldn't? Um, I would like you to, I would like somebody to elaborate on that. That's really interesting. I never, I never thought about it from that point of view. And then also, too, you have people who will use you know, bisexual people or gay people just to get off and then, t you know, discard them. And that's not okay. You know, these are people with feelings and emotions. That's never okay to just use somebody like a, like a doll and then put them back on the shelf. So I'm, I'm assuming that what, that might be what you were meaning. So thank you for that. I think that's just real unfortunate when people pressure people to get into situations that they're not comfortable with. Um, King of Makeup. Says, hey, T, I'm late. I just wanted to say that I understand your frustration with YouTube. Please know that whenever, please know that wherever you go, us real ones will follow. Thank you so much. And thank you for the super chat, sis. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Miss Scully B. Hey, Miss Scully B. She sent 25. She says, I almost missed this one, T. You look fire today. Thanks for the Game of Thrones live last night. It was amazing. Thank you for doing this one because it's a bad crisis day for me today. By the way, you should really, you should really out mute by Tammy Charles. It touched on this very thing. Check out. Okay, I'm gonna check that out. Thank you so much, Miss Scully B. And I saw your costume. Shout out to everybody who wore a costume and posted their pictures in the Discord. Um, your Arya, Spar uh, Arya Stark costume was fire. Who, it was somebody else who was dressed like Lady Orlana. Her, if you guys have not seen the costume that people put together in the Discord in the Game of Thrones room, go check it out. Those costumes were dope. The makeup were dope. Um, shout out to Robin V. I loved your Arya Stark's costume as well. Um, somebody else was dressed like uh, Melisandre. Like y'all really went all out and I really appreciate it. So thank you guys. Um, let's see here. A cat sent five and says they're called unicorn hunters. What are unicorn hunters? Y'all be having all these new names. Y'all know I'm old school. What is a unicorn hunter? I didn't even know unicorns damn exist. Y'all got all these new names on social media. Some, let me, okay, somebody write them. What is a unicorn hunter? I'm going to look in the chat real quick before I go. Yeah, I love Lady Orlina. She was dope. What is a unicorn hunter? I have not seen WandaVision, but I plan on binge watching it. I heard it's really good. I do plan on binge watching that. Let's see. I see unicorns in the chat, but I don't see, see nobody else knows what the hell a unicorn hunter is. 
Yeah, the only unicorns I know aren't that ain't that the barbs is emoji unicorns. <laughs> okay, let's see. Somebody says a unicorn hunter seeks out by women. Why did y'all delete her comment? Who deleted her comment? Now this person is writing what a unicorn hunter is, and somebody just blocked them off my channel. See, I'm gonna have to get rid of some of you mods because y'all be doing little shisty shit. Blue Raspity says the unicorn hunter seeks out bi women for group sex. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Y'all don't like that. Y'all out here blocking, you know what I'm saying, regular fans. She didn't write anything for y'all to be blocking her. Like, chill out, mods. Um, Jay Stivia says, gotta watch WandaVision. It's very good. I heard. I heard it's really good. I'm definitely gonna check it out. Um a Rage, I don't know if I pronounced it right. I'm sorry. It's A and then R E J J said 1999 says, Why tear not? We'll always follow you in your realness, T. Thank you so much and thank you for the super chat, love. Appreciate you. Um, Destiny Cash sent five dollars. Says, I think the next show should be supernatural. I don't know though, because it's 15 seasons. It's gonna take me all year to catch up on supernatural. I heard it's good. I've watched some of it. There was one episode I watched where they had like a spirit that was going through like the, the wires, like through the internet, and it was causing havoc. That was a dope episode. I did catch that. But I haven't watched all the other ones. Let's see here. Even when I was a mod, I had to call out other mods. Um, Deanna Ford says, my friend said a unicorn is a person willing to have sex with a couple. Okay. I did unblock her. Yeah, that was trash. I don't know why the mod tried to block her. That was trash. I'm gonna have to go back and see what mod it was because some of y'all be doing too much. Let's see here. Westworld. That is not a unicorn hunter. Okay, now y'all arguing about, you know what? All right, it's time for you to go. Somebody got mad faces. They're like, that's not what a unicorn hunter is at all. That's between you and this new generation. Never heard of it before tonight, but good luck to all the unicorn hunters out there. Hope you catch your unicorns. If it's a good or a bad thing, I have no idea. In the meantime, everybody else, <laughs> protect yourself, protect your energy and your space. And just, again, like I said, be smart when it comes to anybody online. I don't care who it is. Celebrity, regular person, influencer, just be smart. You know what I'm saying? And don't put you know so much faith in people because you see them on television. That means nothing. So I'm going to be paying very close attention to this case concerning T.I. and Tiny. I'm going to be paying attention, seeing what comes of it. And I'm also going to be paying close attention to see if anything comes of this whole Amber Heard situation and James Charles situation. Because it's going to be very interesting because, again, this is not the first time he's been caught doing this, but he's always being excused. So we'll see how YouTube deals with him. But, you know, they'll probably do the same thing that they did to, like, David Dorbrick. Nothing. Nothing at all. So it is what it is. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate y'all coming through. So on that note, you guys, I'm out, and I'll see you guys again next time. Bye.